get behind the monitor. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming. Let's pull some more people in here. This is a super special performance that we have today um, by a really good friend and wonderful, wonderful, amazing musician. Uh, so multiple world champion and international titles in jazz, accordion, and of course, this awesome MIDI accordion behind us. Um, really good friend of mine now and our students. Uh, we just love you and we're so happy to have you. Uh, so everyone, please give a really big warm welcome to Corey Pesaturo. Thank you. I was going to say Jenny, but it's Professor Jenny on your badge. I'm going to go by that. Well, thank you guys. My God. It's, uh, usually I'd be standing on performances, but I think after three and a half days of running around NAM with a 25-pound instrument, I might, I might do the stool today. <laughs> this will be probably more of an intimate setting, as usually at these concerts at NAM, I kind of just go full fire the whole time. We might actually get some slow tunes in for you guys, just for you guys, you know, really. Uh, maybe some Italian friends coming, so we'll do some, some old-fashioned, slower Italian things. So, yes, this is, um, it's really a Roland as we're talking about MIDI, yes. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about how this was created, since this is the, the MIDI booth, and, and how it all came to be that there's electric accordions. I'll give you a little history of the electric accordion in America, because a lot of people don't realize how much history actually there is involved in it. Um, so let me start with something you would more expect from accordion. I'll do kind of a French musette medley of things. Uh, and yes, there are no reeds in this. It's all MIDI. How many accordion players do we have? Oh, well, yeah. Does that even count? <laughs> With Sydney, two. Okay. <laughs> two, really? All right, two, three. I'll help you guys out. <laughs> All right, so here's, here's a little French thing. And we'll get crazier and we'll get more electronic as we go forward. But let's start here. Something like that. <laughs> Always improvising up here. So yeah, there, there's more of your classic uh, kind of accordion sound, although I did have acoustic bass on there. Um, do a little something a little bit more wilder. And then I'll go over kind of how this thing works. Uh, let's see here. Oh. <laughs> Let's just go really wild for this one, since I'm coming across that. See, there's a screen up top. That's what I'm looking at. Gives me, you know, stock updates, weather updates, radar, all that good stuff. Not really. Wish it did. That'd be fun. 
I need, I need a jazz standard from the audience. If I can... Scream one. <laughs> we did Giant Steps with Jesus yesterday, though. <laughs> Something different than that one. I already did that one. What? Ooh. Oh, you got one I don't know, that one. <laughs> I, that one I don't know, though. Misty by Sarah Oh, Vaughan. Misty. Look well, it's got to be. Yeah, but wait a minute. It's got to be a little bit of a faster one for this to work. Oh, shoot. That's Lullaby a great tune, though. Birdland. Although, wait, well, wait a minute. A lullaby of Birdland. We could Birdland. do. Because, I mean, we create these on the spot. Let me, uh, let's try it, Misty. Maybe. Maybe this can work. All creating it on the spot. done that one on those patches so <laughs> I like picking one I haven't done because that is something different so now how does that work <laughs> there's not all little people in my accordion I promise you and we did not rehearse that uh, so the doo patch is not only the most fun for me because it's just hilarious and it sounds amazing but it's actually the only patch on here which is both touch sensitive and pull sensitive most of the sounds on here if I played accordion then it would be all pull. So if I don't play the bellows, right? It's just like a normal accordion. If I played the organ, which I'll probably do some maybe later on the organ, same thing with the organ. It's just all pull sensitive. But then if I have a sound that is of an instrument that you would normally pluck or hit, electric piano, I don't have to pull the bellows at all. So it's all touch. But you can do both of them and then have something that's touch sensitive and pull sensitive at the same time. So I have that and then if I hit this. And I can bring in the accordion. So you have both at the same time. On the acoustic accordion, how you touch the keys is more just 
your technique in general. It doesn't affect the sound so much. It's all about the bellow. So on this, you've got both. Um, and so for uh, the quick history of electric accordion, the accordion itself was invented in 1820s or so, and it's a debates of who actually was first to do it. But the Italians have mostly done it the past 150 years. The first electric accordions came out in about 1959. They were not great. They were acoustic accordions that had touch-sensitive electronic sounds in them. And there was the Cordovox and the Sanovox and the Elkavox. Anybody ever heard of any of these things? Yes. <laughs> Two guys have, yes. This is, if you were an accordion player in the 70s and you were trying to hold on to your accordion gigs while everyone's like, don't play accordion, we don't want to see accordion anymore, you had to play the Sanovox or the Elkavox or the, the Cordovox. Um, but then you jump to Roland in 2004, 2005, it came out the first version of this. But that was really only because of Mr. Kakahashi, who invented Roland, he created it, and he wanted to build the accordion. No one else at Roland wanted to do it because they said, how many accordions are we gonna sell? No one wants to play accordion, no one wants to buy accordion. So I owe so much of <laughs> my modern career, really, to Mr. Kakahashi, who has since passed away. But he forced Roland to make the electric accordion. But little side note, little side note, there was a guy in Stoneham, Massachusetts, only about 30 minutes from where I live in Rhode Island, who invented truly the first electronic accordion that had bellows sensory and touch sensitive, and that's Ray Cavicchio. And he's still alive. He's still got a couple of those accordions. So he was really the first guy. A bit of that. Um, but now this is what we have on this, on this particular accordion. So um, let's see. What other genre? We'll go through some more wacky genres, and then we'll open it up to the audience more maybe. Um, let me save the Italian. Let's do this. Let's do maybe more of a, uh, why not? <laughs> give, actually, wait, the music students, give me a, a key. E flat. E, flat. e flat, okay, give me another key. What was it? Well, that's kind of the same thing. <laughs> I mean, I'd play them differently, but what was it A? C? Oh, B, 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 I see. Trying, all right. <laughs> and then, wait a minute, and then, so we got E flat, we need a minor, and then uh, one more. D minor. D minor, okay. I might actually start in D minor. Then we'll go from there, okay. That's fine. How is that sounding in the microphones here? that comes through the speakers correctly, but <laughs> you don't need DJs, just hire accordion players. It's very simple. <laughs> Jenny, you, you give me a genre music. What are we, 
I don't know if the Italians are here. I know I'm going to do some Italian stuff when I get here. What? <laughs> Let's do that. That'll be for up. Give a mix of this. Now, if anyone can name those three Italian tarantellas, you get a free Reese's. I don't think so, no. <laughs> Come on, Jenny, you got to know one of those. But I don't know. That, okay. I'm happy. The, the percussion, by the way, that people are thinking, <laughs> people are thinking on percussion. Love the shirt, Martin. <laughs> uh, that's all touch sensitive. So, oh, what? Oh, we got to switch cable. Okay, okay. Hold on. Everybody thinks, oh, uh, how do you get your drum tracks? And I was like, drum tracks? Are you crazy? I would never, ever, ever use a track <laughs> like this, especially a drum track. It's all touch sensitive again. So if I go to a jazz uh, patch, is that coming through? Is it coming through? Okay. I have the ride cymbal on the basses, and then I have snare on the chords. So you can kind of be, you know, you can kind of be a comper, a drummer, and a bass player with just these four fingers. I'm trying to be three people with four fingers, in a way. Yeah, I'm trying to be three people. <laughs> and then solo. There's no tracks on that. <laughs> but it's all if I if I touch it lightly and I go harder. Right? And then same with even the electronic techno y sound. If I have the wind in this one, I think. Yeah. If I hit it hard, I've got wind. If I hit it softer, you a little bit different sound. 
So it's it's mixing all those two things together, which you just don't have on the on the normal accordion. So that's kind of one of the main benefits of playing electric accordion. You're this, there's a lot more responsibility, because trust me, the, to, to have a not good accordion player play this versus an acoustic is really dangerous. It's really dangerous. <laughs> it can go south quickly. Uh, let's see. Let's do, uh, this, is a, this is totally different sounds. We'll do uh, Astro Piazzolla Tango, 332 Tango. This is probably the most popular tango -y accordion tune that seems to go around the world. Everybody plays this one. Uh, we'll do a version of Libra Tango. And we'll, we'll change key somewhere in there, make it something different. So you guys have all heard this. So Master Piazzolo, trying to cover all the countries here in a half hour. <laughs> uh, I mean, any questions on how this works or anything? I don't know. Is there, is there a talk mic for the audience or something? <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> uh, here we go. Here's a mic. No. I was I was just saying, oh, are you a go. magician? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> because you seem you are a magician no, on no, the no. <laughs> chord. You're, I can explain like what I'm doing. Five people playing one, uh, you know, that's absolutely amazing. Thank you. Well, if I want to do something weird, I can absolutely just do it, which is great. nice. Instead of trying to explain to the drummer or the bassist what I want to do, <laughs> I just do it. Uh, but I don't know. Anyone else? Any, any, any? <laughs> Mr. Irish over here. All right. So uh, you're playing at Vibrato's on Tuesday. On Tuesday, yes. Shameless, shameless plug here. No, no, no. Vibrato no, no. on Tuesday. So you <laughs> come got, to Vibrato. You got like Carl Verhan, yeah. Leah Zeger, mm -hmm. and uh, Bernie Dressler. Are they yes. just going to sit there and do nothing while you you play all that <laughs> stuff, or what kind of music are you going to play? I mean, it, it'll it'll be jazz based, but of course there's going to be uh, you know me and Leah do everything. We do opera. I mean, so it, who knows exactly what we're going to do? We have. I, I didn't plan that show. At 5 o'clock, I was figuring out what we were doing. So by vibrato, I might have figured out by 4 p.m. Tuesday. But um, we'll see. It'll be a mix of things, but jazz-based. Um, no, but it, it's so fun, of course, to be able to play with people. The whole beauty of 
of music, and especially with jazz and a lot of genres, like klezmer music, I do a lot of that, is the interaction of everybody. Because I can only think of what I'm thinking about, but someone else is going to come up with some other rhythmic idea, or some other chord idea, you know. Carl may come up with some wacky chromatic thing and then I can follow it. That's the whole fun of it, is, is paying attention to everybody else. It's much more fun to be, oh, what's he going to do? What's, what's she going to do? I don't That's the whole fun of the music. But the thing is, you have to have the technical <clears throat> and ear training skills to be ready. Because the worst is when someone plays some sick lick and you're like, ah. And then when you figure it out, it's two seconds too late. You got to figure out it instantly. So, um, you know, but that, that's kind of the fun, the fun of everything. Uh, but I, I prefer, of course, to play with people. So that'll be a lot of fun. And we'll probably be smiling the whole time because we're not going to know exactly what we're doing. Uh, hopefully I won't spring a tune on all of them in the last minute, like we did, uh, you know, Friday, but <laughs> all that. Anybody else for play more? Or? All right. Oh, oh, oh. Hi, I play the accordion. Uh, the oh, you fifth, do? Fifth grade. Oh, fifth grade. Yeah, fifth grade uh, <laughs> music class. And uh, you have only one cable connected, and uh, oh. obviously you're going to get electricity and then the sound patch. It's coming from just one cable? Yeah, yeah, both, both come through both here. So, and the top one is uh, a headphone jack. So if you don't want to hear anybody, you know, no one wants to listen to you practice, you put it here. <laughs> but, uh, you know, both come through one. Wow. So, wow. so that can work. Oh. Thank you. I'm, I'm on a bass pass for some reason. <laughs> While I was on that patch, <laughs> make up some stuff. Bass players hate that, <laughs> obviously. You can't do that here because I only have one octave for, for the accordionists in the audience. We only have one octave here. So when I'm playing bass lines, I'm actually faking you out that I have more than one octave, you know. It just it keeps cycling back. But when I'm playing, you don't necessarily catch it, right? It's kind of it's kind of hidden a little bit. You're like who's really catching? Oh, he's only got one octave. Like, eh. You can kind of fake it a bit. Um, but you can especially hear it like if I go back to an accordion sound, just the straight accordion and do it. The thing is, because the accordion, and this is acting like a real accordion, I've got four different reeds on here. So the thing is, your ear will pick up on another reed block when it goes to the next octave. So it takes almost over two octaves for your ear to hear, wait a minute, is he just repeating? Because there's multiple reeds at different octaves. So you can kind of fake it out. Mm, you know, uh, there, there's that aspect of the accordion. Because the left hand of the accordion, just so everybody knows, it was designed to get rid of stride piano because stride piano is extremely difficult, right? Note, chord, note, chord, note, chord, where I can just go. That's, how, that's why it was designed this way because at that time, stride piano was a big thing. Um, it's a great system unless you want to do chromatics. Chromatics are terrible. <laughs> But most Western music is based on the line of fourths and fifths. Not to get into theory, but, you know, I hate the idea of a circle of fifths. It's not a circle. It's a line. It goes on forever. And the accordion demonstrates that. <laughs> it goes, I mean, the, maybe the best example. I know it's a little late or a little early for um, it's the most wonderful time of the year. But if, if, I go, if I go to the bridge of that tune. Da -da -da -da. Now watch what happens on the left hand. Actually run out of notes, I have to keep going. So it goes all the way down. It just goes 
goes all the way right down. So it's like you're not going around a circle and hitting again. No, no, no. It goes on. So usually accordions have B double flat, actually. The Roland decided to go one up. So it's actually F flat is the last one. But I don't think of this as E. I think of this as F flat. Because if I'm playing in D flat, it's in that area. If I'm playing in sharps, I'm in this area. So uh, that, that's kind of a bit of left hand accordion. Don't go by the CPES. That has nothing to do with the system. It's not, pay no attention to the letters. But do if you want to follow me on Instagram. <laughs> Then pay attention to the letters. Other than that, no. So, um, let's see. What, what other genre do you want to hear? What, what have we not done? The what? <laughs> I, can, I can try to do some. That's right, someone wanted a rock melody. Uh, where is it on this accord? See, I have all these different accordions, and I have slightly different sets that I created. OK, yeah. There's the bass. Wait a minute, let's make sure. Let's get some bass in here. Okay, let's see. Ah, uh, can we do? Once, not a guitarist playing that tune. Okay. <laughs> you can think of the Weird Al version, right? <laughs> and I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, we're, we're up for a Grammy this week, because I was a featured accordion player on Weird Al, and he's up, we're up against Barbie, so that's going to be all tough, but hopefully. Uh, so the chance, chance we could all win a Grammy for that, uh, the music of that album. That would be very cool. Me, of all the things, Jenny, I did in my career, if I won a Grammy for playing a polka, if that would be the strangest possible thing. that My whole life has been running from polka. And then, yeah, that would really be something. <laughs> it's like, all right, Corey, here's your first tune for the movie. It's like, uh... It's like, really? That's, yeah, I, we need that for the scene when he turns, puts the record on and that song plays. Like, that's what you want me to play. So then, of course, when I first did it, I went, you know, I said, well, I got to make it exciting. And they said, no, 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 no. It's got to be straight. It's got to be very simple. I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. It's like, we need it for the most. So that, that's what's in the movie, oddly enough. Ah, OK. So there's some progressive rock. Um, if you notice, too, on that, that rock patch was both touch sensitive, right, and pull sensitive, because when I pulled it more, you heard the, so I, I actually had the electric guitars on a pull sensitive, because I, I can get more out of it. Uh, let's see, let's go to something a little different. Let's go to a completely pull sensitive one. Uh, let's see, do this one. Da, da, da. 
little ode to uh, Joey D, who I last played with here at the NAM before he so suddenly died. Oh, so tragic. Joey D, one of my heroes. Uh, what, what do we have time for? for... <laughs> okay. What does the audience want? <laughs> it's the genre machine. Pick a... <laughs> I'm going to go back to... Uh... Yo, 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 play <laughs> disco. How are you doing? What? Disco. Disco. <laughs> play, play like a pirate song, but like with disco instruments, you know? A pirate you know, disco yeah, song. Yeah, yeah. Wow, all right. Welcome that's, to NAM, ladies my, and gentlemen. That's my student right there. Thank you. Only at NAM will you hear an electric accordion player with a flamed accordion playing a pirate disco song. Okay. Let's see, because... Oh, that's much better. Yeah, the other speakers, you couldn't hear the... Okay. Ooh. I was like, what's going on with that? Uh, wait, what was that... What was that tune that went viral? That pirate thing? Because I could use that as kind of a... The wh Whaler Man or something. Well, how, how did that go? <laughs> wait a minute. Da -da 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 -da. Mm -hmm. The the yo ho all hands that one? No, not that one. That one. Oh, oh no, okay, okay. I know, I know. I, I remember it. I remember it now. I once put a ship that put to sea. Yeah, 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 Thank you. 
wackiest things we've ever done. Let's give it up for Corey Pesaduro. <laughs> thank you, Corey. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And, and then we can go back to what I grew up with, but it's just like, you know, as I say, you got to start somewhere, you know. <laughs> there you go, there you go. I can take questions too while we're, I don't know, it's like, I'm here. Any questions? So, Corey, that pretty amazing stuff. That, <laughs> I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Pretty, but. pretty terrifying. <laughs> um, so that, that instrument is pretty pretty rich. It does a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, MIDI is, is really what we're all about here, right? So I know, and I know so little about it. That's okay, though, because it's all Wait inside. a minute. Musical instrument digital interface. I got that part. Okay. Yeah. Whew. All right. Lesson one. So I, my, my question is really, you know, we're, we're evolving and MIDI 2.0 is uh, it's moving forward. There's all sorts of great stuff it's bringing. What things would you like to see brought to your instrument that you that you can envision that you can't do right now? Ooh. I mean, oddly enough, at least on this, the one thing we cannot do in accordion is sustain. It'd be nice if there was a sustain pedal here. Chin, Chin sustain? Just, just one little, you know. <laughs> That would be nice. Although a lot of times when I really get playing, I kind of get in here, so then it could be a problem. But put it in some spot, you could do it. Yeah, sustain would be nice. Um, obviously, I love the ability to have more sounds, which that Ray Cavicchio instrument actually does. You can put a ton of sounds in it. Uh, but of course, <laughs> Roland wanted you to buy modules. So they could have easily put a trillion sounds on here. They did not, and they wanted you to buy the module. So yeah, more sounds. Um, but not really. The, the version, the accordion that came out after this had a looper. Now, a looper is really cool. Sort of cheating. But, right, for what I do, <laughs> my whole thing is every note you've ever heard me play since the first day I started playing accordion is a note I played. I don't want anything out there that I actually didn't play. So, but I respect the hell out of loopers, but I'm not saying that. I, I saw the World Championships of Looping Watch. I was stunned. But in terms of what I do, because what I've known to all this do this stuff... If I started getting into looping, I'd be like, oh, well, he just did that as a loop. It's like, no, 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 no. But so I don't know. I mean, this instrument is now 15 years old, and there's not really much more. I would love just more sounds. Or maybe the ability to have, like, a Bluetooth to an app on my phone, and I could change sounds on the phone, something like that, or have it here. You know. But in terms of the way it plays, I don't know. Uh, it sees the bellows as a continuous controller. So really, if you hook this up to a computer, it is completely limitless of what you could think of. The, the first time I hooked this up to a computer with an engineer, like you guys that know a lot about MIDI, he's like, let's have it set up where uh, the more you pull the bellows, the more it arpeggiates, and uh, you know, a, a chord you play. You know, things like this. So it kind of becomes limitless of what you could actually do. But um, I don't know. There's not too much. The sustain thing is, is the big one. Because I, tr I try to like, you know, I try to do like a fake sustain when I play and things like that, manager. But um, I don't know. I need to talk to you guys about because you probably would think of an idea that I have not even thought of of something that I need. Yeah, you because know, I'm so used to playing this one. Um, early on in, in the presentation today, you mm -hmm. talked about how the, the the key bed of an accordion is typically not touch sensitive in any way, but this right. one is. You're right. But does it have any touch sensitivity? Does it have after touch once the, the the note is actually in flight? Right, right, right. Can, can you do pitch bend or anything yes, kind of with that? Yes. So, so like in, in the organ, what's great, if I just hold the organ here, and then I keep, press it harder, Leslie comes on. And then I keep holding it, and it goes off. And the same when, when you heard I did uh, the rock tune, in that one, you heard... So I can actually get a low E. So you can do that. Um, so the you know the aftertouch is amazing. That's the other thing. The accordion that came out after this didn't have aftertouch. You had to use these chin switches. And I was like, oh, I, I want to do it while I'm playing. You know, that's like the whole thing. Um, so there's that. But yes, there is a, there is aftertouch, which is nice. <laughs> I would love if like Roly, you guys probably know Roly. If like <laughs> if Roly made a keyboard for this, it'd be like, ah, and I could do all oh that. Okay, that would be fun. <laughs> Let's get on that. Yeah. Do you have a favorite preset? No, nah, not really. It just depends on 
what the scenario is, uh, really. Uh, no, not really. I mean, uh, probably, well, I should say the doo -wop. The doo -wop is amazing. That one's so fun. Um, and those are real voices. And actually, uh, one of them I've played gigs with, one of the four voices of these guys. There's four different people. And uh, he, was, he was the tenor. I've played with many times with them. He remembered when they went in and did these sounds. So it's, it's real people singing, actually. And that's all touch sensitive, right? If I go easy, now it's the bellows. But if I go a little harder, and if I go harder, so you have to actually practice that patch and how hard. Because if I want to come, if I'm playing really fast, and I want it to be do woo 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 woo, and I don't want to hit da da, you got to kind of practice. Because if I go too hard, then you're gonna hear, and I don't want that sound. Don't I? So you got to kind of practice how you slide in. And, and the thing is, on this accordion, I play everything completely differently on every patch that I'm on. It really depends on what I'm doing. Um, and it, like if I play the sax, I, I play big fat chords and slide into it. If I play the organ, I play really flat. Don't do this piano play. Don't play like this. But when I'm playing the organ, I do that a lot. Um, if I, like when I play the bass thing, if I'm going to do that, uh, then I'm probably going to do something. Um, where in the world is that one? Yeah, I play also kind of. Yeah. I kind of play more like almost like a bass player. Normally this is good technique, but I don't want it. it's too it's too rigid. You know, it's bad technique, but I'm not <laughs> but if I'm playing an accordion piece, you know, then then I'm back to kind of back to your usual piano technique. So it depends on what on what patch I'm playing on. Uh, that I'm going to use different techniques for it, uh, depending on it. It's not, not like this is taught. You just kind of learn when you're doing it. Or if I'm doing something with strings and I want to be really smooth, and I'm trying to, like, without picking up my fingers, you know, I'm trying to... So I'm playing really weird on that, but I don't, I don't want to lift the fingers because I'm trying to make it like it's an orchestra playing. So you, you just have to think, what, what sounds do I want and, and change your technique on that. But yeah, you should learn the correct technique first. <laughs> don't do this and this, don't do that, yeah, later. So, I don't know. Any, Any other, other questions? Any other? Can we get maybe one more short piece and okay. get it, and so we have an ending? Okay, okay, <laughs> what an ending, ending. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Um, actually, well, all right. What, what, what does the audience want? What am I ending Nam Any with? Any suggestions? It's a bit of a bit of a risk. Could it's a bit do, of a risk. Could we do the song "My Favorite Things"? Ah, I don't totally know that one though. Like, I, if there was a band, I could play it with them, but. Alone, -er. some part. I don't want to screw that up and have that on camera. <laughs> a Bach feud. A what? A Bach feud. Whoa. Hmm. I used to know one many years ago when I did competitions. I don't know if I can remember that one right now. I'd have to pull that out of my. Well, I could do something classically based. Something. I, I, you know what I love on here is Vivaldi. It sounds good on accordion. So we could maybe, maybe that. There's a lot of bellow shakes. So the bellow, I can kind of go, all right. Because what time is it? It's two. The what? <laughs> 2.51. Oh, geez. Okay, you're, okay. You're trying killing to think, it. Trying to think, okay, we'll do like a shortened version. <laughs> yeah.
Satoru, everyone. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> All right, let's give it up for Corey Pesatero. Thank you, Corey.